In this video, I'm going to go over my updated 2024 electoral map prediction with exactly seven months to go until the election on November 5th. There's been a lot of talk lately about a Biden bump in the polls. However, Trump still maintains a relatively solid lead nationally and has been ahead continuously since October of last year. Trump also leads in virtually every single swing state. And so in this video, I'm going to show you what the electoral map would look like if the election was held today. We will begin by filling in the solid states, states that will easily go for either Biden or Trump by margins of 12 percentage points or more. For the incumbent president, he's on track to winning Washington, California, Hawaii, as well as Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, the 1st District of Maine, his home state of Delaware, Maryland, and the District of Columbia, giving him 112 electoral votes. Meanwhile, Trump is going to win Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, North and South Dakota, the entirety of Nebraska with the exception of the 2nd District, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana, the 2nd District of Maine, Alaska, and the states of Iowa and Ohio. These two states were competitive in 2012. Obama won Iowa by five and Ohio by three. Fast forward four years, Donald Trump flips these two states and wins them by an even larger margin than Trump did just four years prior. In 2020, Joe Biden was supposed to be a better candidate than Hillary Clinton, but he lost these two states by virtually the same margin. Iowa and Ohio are no longer battleground states. They are solid states for the Republicans and especially solid for Donald Trump. We will now move on to categorizing the likely states. These states are still relatively solid for either Biden or Trump, but they have the potential of becoming more competitive. And these states will be classified by margins between 5 and 12 percentage points. For Biden, he's on track to winning the states of Oregon, Colorado, Illinois, New York and New Jersey by likely margins. This puts him up at 191 electoral votes. With New York and New Jersey, the scandals that have hit major Democratic figures in these two states are going to hurt them in the general election this November. In New York, of course, Andrew Cuomo resigned and has been replaced by the very unpopular Kathy Hochul. And of course, Cuomo resigned after a sexual harassment scandal. So in New York, the election was very close in 2022, especially for the governor's election. It was decided by less than 10 points. And even on the Senate level, Chuck Schumer, who is the Senate majority leader and one of the highest profile Democrats, he only won his reelection by 14 points in a state that Biden won by 23 in 2020. And 2022 was supposed to be a good midterm year overall for Democrats, where they were able to win in both Pennsylvania and Nevada. In New Jersey, we have a new poll out. This is the first poll from the state, and it shows Biden leading by just seven points. What happened with Bob Menendez and the bribery scheme with Egypt is going to hurt Democrats in the state. Now, they're still overwhelmingly favored to win them, but it's definitely going to be closer than it was last time. Before we continue, only 6% of you guys are subscribed. If everybody subscribed right now, we would be able to reach 100,000 in less than a day. So please take this time to consider subscribing. For Trump, he has some pretty surprising likely states as well, but these are states that you would expect to be closer, but he's actually going to win by a much larger margin than he did in the last election. Texas is probably going to go to the former president by a double-digit margin. It's probably going to be right under 12%, similar to his 9-point victory in 2016. Now, the second likely state for Trump is going to be the third largest state by population, and that, of course, is Florida. 30 electoral votes. This is a big prize for the former president. And when we look at what happened in 2016, Trump was able to win it, despite nearly all the polls showing that he wouldn't. In 2020, with the same story, Biden was supposed to win Florida, but Trump actually wins it by a larger margin. 
And if you go to 2022, Mark Rubio won his re-election to the Senate by 16.4%. The last time Mark Rubio was on the ballot, he only won by 7.7. The state of Florida has taken a significant shift to the right. And as a result of that, Donald Trump will be able to win the Sunshine State by a likely margin. Florida is no longer a battleground. It is no longer one of the key toss-up states. Trump is also on track to winning in the state of North Carolina, a state that he won by 1.3% in 2020. However, the latest polling average shows Trump ahead by 4.6%, and the polling here has almost always underestimated the former president. And if you look at the polling, Biden has never even been close. But if you go back to at the same period of time in 2020, Joe Biden was on track to winning the Tar Heel State by three points. So Trump is in a significantly better position now than he was four years ago. And that is why he is on track to winning these three Sun Belt states by larger margins than usual. We now have 112 electoral votes worth of states left. And it is these states that will actually decide the outcome of the election. Now, there are some pretty big changes from 2020. States like Florida and North Carolina are no longer in this category, while states like New Mexico, Minnesota, Virginia, and New Hampshire, states that Biden won pretty handily last time, are now featured as a key battleground. And so the first lean state I have for Joe Biden is going to be New Mexico. This is the only state with a Hispanic majority. And over the last few years, especially after Biden's election, we've seen a lot of Hispanic voters moving away from the Democrats in favor of the Republicans. The state was pretty close in the early 2000s, with Gore winning it by 0.06 in 2000. 2004, it was once again decided by a tilt margin. Barack Obama was able to win it by a solid 15-point margin in 2008, but that margin's been going down ever since, with Biden winning it by 10 points in 2020. However, of course, with the Hispanic shift, we are going to see this state become more competitive, and Biden is pulling ahead by around 5% right now, so a lean categorization is quite fitting. Biden is also on track to winning the state of Minnesota, but by a smaller margin than last time. He was able to win it by seven points, which was honestly a pretty impressive performance, considering that Hillary Clinton only won the state by 1.5% in 2016. And this is good evidence that Minnesota can be competitive, despite being the state with the longest continuous voting streak of voting in favor of Democrats in presidential elections. No Republican has won a presidential election in Minnesota since 1972. However, the latest polling from the state shows Joe Biden ahead by just 3%. This is actually a quite worrying margin, considering that the polls did overestimate Biden here in 2020. But for right now, I do have Minnesota still going to Biden, just by a much smaller margin than before. And in Virginia, Joe Biden currently leads by 4.3%, less than half of his 10-point margin from the last election. The state went for Clinton by 5.3. That margin doubled to 10 in 2020 for Biden. That margin is probably going to go down to a margin close to Clinton's from eight years ago. And so that is why Virginia will be lean for the Democrats as well. Moving up north to the northeast, we have two more lean states for Biden, and these are going to be the states of Maine and New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, the state was decided by a 0.37% margin eight years ago. Hillary Clinton came very close to losing the Granite State. The last time New Hampshire has gone red was all the way back in 2000 with the election of George W. Bush. Meanwhile, in 2020, Biden won New Hampshire by a relatively solid 7.4% margin. I do believe that Biden is going to hold on to the state just by a smaller margin, and that is why New Hampshire will now be placed into the lean category. And all the states in this category will be decided by margins of between 1% and 5%, with tilt states, which we'll go over later on, being states that will be decided by margins less than 1%. And so up in Maine, this is probably the biggest surprise of the 2024 cycle. Biden was able to win the first district by a solid margin in 2020, but Trump only won the second district by 7.4. 
Signs today, though, point to Donald Trump being able to win that second district by a solid margin. The latest poll shows Trump ahead by 20 in the second district, and an earlier poll showed him ahead by 14. What's more is that in the state as a whole, Donald Trump actually leads by 6% in the latest poll. And in an earlier poll, which shows that this isn't an anomaly, Biden was only ahead by 1%, despite having won the state by nine points four years prior. Maine is no doubt going to be a lot closer than it was in the last election, and that's why it's going to be a lean state for Biden. Now, for Trump, we have, first off, the second district of Nebraska. He is on track to winning this district back. He won it in 2016 and then lost it in 2020. But with redistricting, the district is going to favor Trump a little bit more, and that should be enough to put him over the edge. Now moving on to the lean states for Trump, and if you look at the states remaining now, this is a lot similar to the battlegrounds that we had for 2020. And so the first lean state for Trump, this is probably the most obvious split for Trump in terms of states that he's never won before, and that is going to be the silver state of Nevada. Trump lost the state by the same 2.4% margin in both 2016 and 2020. And if you look at the latest polling right now, Trump leads by 3.2%. In the five-way polling, he performs even better with a 5.5 percentage lead over the incumbent president. And so Republicans have made pretty big gains in the state over the last few years. The Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Masto narrowly won her re-election in 2022. However, Republicans were able to win the governorship with Joe Lombardo defeating incumbent Democrat Steve Sisolak in that same election. In Arizona, Republicans are on track to win here as well. And so I'm going to group this with Georgia. I mean, if you look at the two states of Arizona and Georgia, these were the two closest races of the 2020 election. Biden won Arizona by 0.31. Georgia went for Biden by 0.24. These were pretty big victories for Democrats. They hadn't won these two states since the Clinton era. However, if you really think about it, Joe Biden's popularity at this point nationwide was 51%. He was approved of by 51% of the country. Fast forward now, his approval is sitting at around 38, 39 points. Is Biden really going to be able to win two states that he won by just a hair four years ago, considering his newfound unpopularity? And so Arizona, we see Trump leading by 4.5%. Biden has never even been close to overtaking him. In the five-way polling average, Trump leads by an even larger margin. In Georgia, we see a similar trend. Trump has always been ahead throughout the entirety of this election cycle. He even led by seven points just a few weeks ago. And in the five-way polling, Trump is still ahead by 5.6 percentage points. Joe Biden doesn't really stand too much of a chance in these two Sun Belt states, which is why they're both going to be lean Republican. And once again, we are left with Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. It's always these three states. For the foreseeable future, they are going to be the ones to decide presidential elections. They made up the former blue wall that Trump tore down in 2016 that Biden was able to narrowly rebuild in 2020. And the first state I'm going to categorize is going to be Wisconsin. I have Trump winning it by a lean margin. It's always been the most conservative out of the three, whether it's with gubernatorial races, Senate races, and especially on the presidential level. Trump won Wisconsin by the largest margin out of the three when he won them in 2016, and Biden won Wisconsin by the smallest margin when he won these three states back in 2020. The latest polling shows Trump leading by 0.6, but you really can't trust the polling from Wisconsin because in 2020, Biden was supposed to win this state by 6.7. He eventually won it by just 0.7. That's how much Democrats were oversampled. It was never really close according to the polls, but really when it came down to it, Wisconsin was the third narrowest state of the election. And that's why I have it as lean now for Donald Trump. In Michigan, I have the state as being tilt in favor of the former president, with Trump leading by 2.8% statewide. Same thing with the polling from 2020. 
it severely overestimated Biden. Not as badly, but if you look at the 538 average, it was nearly the same as Wisconsin. But the polling from Real Clear Politics is slightly more reliable. However, I mean, if you look at the polling from the last election, it was never supposed to be close, but it ended up being one of the most competitive states in the election. And finally, we have the Keystone State of Pennsylvania. This is Joe Biden's birth state. And this is probably, in my opinion right now, going to be the most competitive state of 2024. Yes, Joe Biden has retaken the lead at the 0.1%. He's ahead of Trump now because of a new outlier poll conducted by Franklin and Marshall that shows Biden ahead by 10. However, before this, Biden hasn't really led in a poll from Pennsylvania since all the way back in February. And if you look at the five-way polling average, Trump still maintains a 2.2% lead. And so that's why, just like with these two other states, the Midwest is known for oversampling Democrats, and that's why I have Pennsylvania as being tilt Republican as well. And so according to my latest 2024 electoral map projection, Donald Trump will win re-election to a second non-consecutive term with 313 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 225.